Hey guys and welcome to my top 5 mod list of T5 Brave New World. I'm going to be showing you the best ones, in my opinion, that I've downloaded from the Steam Workshop. I'm going to be also linking every single one of them in the description as well as any information that is necessary. Enjoy! Number 5 Avatar The Last Airbender It's a mod that only leaves 4 new factions. It's based off the widely popular cartoon Avatar The Last Airbender that airs on Nickelodeon. This mod allows you to play with either of the four new factions, the Fire Nation, the Earth Kingdom, the War Tribe, or the Air Nomads. They're more like civilizations, but I like to call them factions because, well, that's what I'm guessing they're called on the show. Um, they all have their unique traits and units. They don't have any unique buildings, sadly. Um, if you want to learn more about them, I've made a mod showcase video just for this mod. You can check it out if you're interested. I'll leave a link in the description below, as well as the official Steam page for this mod. Also, you can click the annotation that just popped up. Number 4 At number 4 we have more luxuries. And this mod is exactly what it sounds like. It adds 11 more luxuries, which 10 of them are obtainable normally and one of them can only be acquired via city-state allies. It adds luxuries such as olives, tea, perfume, lapis lazuli, chocolate, tobacco, corals, jade, coffee, amber and glass. Of course, glass is like porcelain or jewelry, which is obtainable from city-states only. Now, why is this mod so awesome is because it doesn't just spam the whole map full of luxuries. It actually replaces the vanilla ones, not entirely. It doesn't revamp the whole thing. It just basically makes each luxury a bit more, more rare. So if you spawn next to tobacco, for example, high chances are most of the AI isn't going to have them, which opens up more trade and diplomacy possibilities. Also, since there are more luxury variety, you're going to have more happiness. And it's even better if you finish the Commerce Tree. Um, this will allow you to build more cities, which doesn't make the game any easier in any way, shape or form, since the AI also receives this bonus and will spam cities even more than it does already. Well, of course, most of them are going to be shit regardless, but you get the point. Number 3 Prehistoric Era Mod. It's a massive mod that adds an entire era and massive amounts of reskin units that actually look quite unique. It's like the developers made them themselves, but they actually are mostly reskin scouts. They look awesome nonetheless. Overall, the mod adds 17 new technologies, which might sound quite a lot, you would know what to fit in them but most of them actually just unlock luxury resources um, in the way that you would unlock uh, iron for example or any other strategic resource. Um, it also modifies the ancient era as well as adds a few things to the classical era for example changes the scout to the explorer once you advance to a specific tech. Also the mod adds 6 new buildings, 4 new wonders and the oddpaw style improvement. It also adds 8 new unique units Basically, this era influences the early game quite a lot because even on quick mode, there might be a lot of wars during the classical era or the ancient era, which is extremely rare in the vanilla game. This is why this mod is so awesome. Number 2 Civ Rome, a mod that's basically like Rome 2 Total War, but in Civ. It's based on Rome 1 game map, it adds a fraction of Civs from Rome 2. And that's actually quite a lot, but most of them are city-states that give loads of gold when you actually first discover them. It's a big deal in the game, um, the mod changes quite a lot. It adds slaves as a strategic resource, it changes luxury resource icons, it has its own tech tree. Most of them are work in progress, like 60% of the tree is a work in progress, but it's quite massive. It's quite massive. Almost every faction has somewhat unique units. Um, from the tech tree and a lot of shared mercenaries, which are the only things that can be bought. You can't buy armies, um, character specific armies, for example, uh, Roman legions, you can't buy them with gold, you can only buy mercenaries. You can't even um, uh, buy buildings. Speaking of buildings, it adds loads of them and improves old ones as well as removes tons from Ronilla. Basically, it's a complete overhaul. Though this mod is quite early in development, but it's surely worth your time, it's extremely fun. The AI randomly declare war on you though, and charge you with massive armies like in Rome 2. But you can easily defend from that, basically this mod is really fun, I really suggest you at least try it once. But this is still number, number 2, not number 1. Let's see what's number 1. Number 1. Finally, the best mod in my opinion. It's called 
the era's mod. It's more like a bunch of mods actually that essentially locks you to a specific era. For example, I chose the medieval one, it's the most fun one. Basically the medieval one changes a few things, like you can cross ocean tiles at compass, you don't have to get opti um you don't have to get uh, whatchamacallit astronomy because it's on the Renaissance era. Also it recruits spies on classical eras and medieval eras, basically get two spies in total, and they're super effective in well during the gameplay you get uh, you can steal technologies from people who get a lot of uh, science, which also science kind of useless, but more on that later. Um, it removes the Great Walls and makes it a national wonder that everyone can have. Um, it's really an awesome mod, I really love it personally since I love playing um, with saves that have unique units from early eras. But the problem was always that I... Well, before I can use them, I have to upgrade them. For example, I play with Rome, I get the Legions, and next turn I have to upgrade them to Long Swords. Well, problem solved, yeah? Now, of course, because of the lock, create scientists and science is generally useless um, after you completed the tech tree, and there's literally no point in education apart from the Angok Vat. Um, the most important things are gold and production. Culture is also useful, but eventually they're going to complete every single social policy tree. Um, I haven't done it. I've completed a couple actually when I was playing. Um, on this gameplay, I've played a lot more. I've completed like two and a half trees and dominated quite a huge part of my island. Um, also when you start a match, there are some restricted restricted AI saves, for example, America won't be picked unless you um, manually pick it. It makes the game more fair since Americans don't have anything useful in the early game, um, apart from the exploration thing, but I mean if you're locked to medieval, the medieval era, you can't get uh, the B21 or something or Minutemen. So yeah, uh, similar to many cities like Brazil, Germany, France and so on, they're kind of useless actually. This is why the AI does not pick them. Now the strongest factions are China, the Byzantine Empire, Zulu and Venice. Now China because of their Chikonus, um, the Byzantine because of their uh, Cataphracts, extremely powerful units. And I believe, what is it called, a Dramon, like a, a, a boat. Also the Zulus because of, the, because of their Impis and their combat bonuses. And I thought Venice because, well, Venice has a lot of trade routes and they can actually buy Lanchnechts uh, if they pick commerce, which they most definitely will. Lanchnechts are useful and they don't really go out of style basically. Um, you can buy them for very cheap, very cheap, especially if you go honor as well. Um, basically everyone who has a unique medieval unit is good. Of course, civs like Rome, Askia, Greece are also very good, but I mean the legions actually go of style, you do upgrade them to a long swordsman. There's not such a massive gap, but if you set it on standard mode or above standard, it will feel like a bit longer and you will be able to use your um, ancient era units. And well, I still like to go on the medieval era. Um, and it's if it has unique units on or before the medieval era will actually be super powerful. Now. This is just the medieval era mod. As I said, you can lock any era you want, like the classical era, the ancient era, the atomic era, anything. You can even go for the modern era. Of course, if you're gonna go for the modern era, then I mean, I wouldn't go for it. I wouldn't lock for it unless you want like to lock off nukes. But there are actually mods that disable nukes, and well, I felt like this mod is the best, the number one. There are many mods actually. But my personal favorite is the Medieval Era mod. I really like it, I've played a lot of it. Anyways, that's the end of my top 5 list. Let me know what are your favorite mods in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and share the video. I'll be also linking a lot of stuff, so check out the description as well. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.